Hi guys, Ms. Francis here to continue our discussion on DNA replication. But before we jump back into DNA replication, I just want to take a minute to pause and discuss what we've already discovered regarding DNA. So we've already talked about the structure of DNA. We know that the backbone consists of a phosphate and a sugar, where we know which the sugar is and which the phosphate is because the sugar is connected to the rung. Well, what's the rung? The rung is made up of the nitrogenous bases. And in DNA, DNA, the nitrogenous bases are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, where cytosine and thymine are pyrimidines, they have one ring, and adenine and guanine are purines, they have two rings. Now, when I'm talking about sizing, what I mean is that these rungs have three rings. So according to Chargaff's base pair ruling, each one of those rungs has three rings rings. By hydrogen bonds, I mean the rungs are held together by hydrogen bonds. So the bonds between the nitrogenous bases of the anti-parallel sides are held together by hydrogen bonds. Then we explored scientists that contributed to the discovery of DNA as well as the structure of DNA. So make sure that you know each one of those scientists and their important contribution to what we now know about DNA. Lastly, we talked about DNA replication. We looked at the three models proposed regarding how DNA replication occurs. Watson and Crick proposed the semi-conservative model, which was then supported by data gathered by Messelson and Stahl. So make sure that you know and understand Messelson and Stahl's experiment. Lastly, we explored the major players and the overall process of DNA replication. So you should be able to describe at least 10 events that take place during DNA replication. Now, I told you all that during DNA replication, amazingly, there is only one error per billion nucleotides. Well, that's not how it starts out. Initially, um, there's actually an error at a rate of one per 10,000 base pairs. So then how do we reach that final error rate? Well, DNA polymerase does an amazing thing. It proofreads each new nucleotide against the template nucleotide. So essentially, it acts as like a spell check. And if there's some sort of incorrect pairing, DNA polymerase recognizes it and fixes it. And that's how we end up with our final error rate of one error per billion nucleotides. Despite that, there are also chemical and physical um, agents known as mutagenic agents that can also cause an error in DNA. So um, UV, Rays, x-rays, radioactive emissions all act as mutagenic agents where they can cause changes in the DNA. Um, not all these changes are harmful. Some of them are benign where they have no effect. Some of them are harmful and result in a disease or some sort of disorder, but some of them are actually beneficial and that's um, how evolution actually occurs. Now, even though there is only one error per billion nucleotides made, um, within the leading strand, we're going to have this gap that's going to remain unfilled. In the lagging strand, we don't run into that issue. The gap is always filled. But with the leading strand, we end up with this gap. And through repeated... Um, rounds of replication, what we end up with is shorter and shorter daughter molecules. But have no fear because at the end of our eukaryotic chromosomal DNA molecules, we have telomeres. Now the telomeres don't actually code for anything, but they act as a protection that prevents genes from being eroded through multiple rounds of DNA replication. So um, how does this occur? Well, this occurs through an enzyme known as telomerase. So telomerase doesn't actually repair the three prime end overhang, but what it does is lengthen the telomere. So let me show you what I mean. So here we've got the leading strand. And normally on the leading strand, we would be left with this um, 
missing segment. But telomerase extends this three prime area so that now this once um, going to be gap can now be extended in the usual way by primase, DNA polymerase, and ligase. And now what once was that gap ends up being a longer telomere with this three prime overhang. So now we've lengthened our um, telomere. So why can't I just inject myself then with telomerase to keep on lengthening my telomeres? Because as telomeres shorten, that's how actually we age. Um, but unfortunately, um, telomere length Oh, here we go. So telomere length may be a limiting factor in the lifespan of certain tissues and the organism, meaning that um, when telomere length shortens and shortens and shortens, that is how we age. But I can't just inject myself with telomerase because this is also found in cancerous somatic cells. But what we are able to do is investigate drugs that potentially could act as inhibitors to the, telomer to the telomerase um, as a treatment for cancer.